Hello everybody, this is John McCormick and today I'd like to talk to you about stalking and hacking. Now there's a big difference between the two and that's what I want to talk to you about today. First thing is when you're getting hacked, anybody can hack you for any reason and usually it's not personalized, it's not targeting just to you. It could be anything. It could be your um, credit card could have 10,000 customers information hacked which means there could be 9,999 people that they might do something with that information before it gets to you. So that's the worst case. That's I'm sorry, that's the case that you want to happen. That's the best case scenario is that you're in a large group of people that's been hacked. So so that's hacking, okay? But now you can also get hacked because you have a stalker and that's where it gets scary. That's where it gets more intense. It's because that means you're being targeted just you, not a group of people, just you. There's somebody that wants to stalk you. There's somebody that wants to hack everything that you have. There's somebody that wants to terrorize you. There's somebody who wants to play God with your life and possibly your friends' lives and your family's lives. You know, anyone that's connected to you, they're going to want to connect to them somehow and hurt them because by hurting them, they're going to hurt you. So what I want to talk about today is how to prevent all of this from happening. As far as getting hacked by a large group of people, like from your bank, uh, your credit card, or, or just anything, there's nothing you can do about that. And there could be some customer service rep that has just delicate information about certain customers and maybe your credit card and maybe uses it to buy things. There's nothing you can do about that. Those are just people randomly uh, targeting just anybody. It's not you. But now, as far as how can you prevent someone from deliberately hacking you, hurting you, someone deliberately wanting to stalk you and hurt you? The number one thing is, is prevention. And let me tell you some things about prevention. Um, let's separate people that you know from people you don't know. Let's say people that you don't know, like, I don't know, a customer service rep that you're angry with and you're really using maybe profanity at it. Maybe you're yelling and screaming and calling this person an idiot or stupid or something like that. You don't know who that person is. You don't know who that person knows. And you have to remember, when you're talking to somebody that has access to your address, your phone number, your full name, maybe even a credit card that's tied to your account if they have access to that through their company, they can do a lot of things to you. Just by having your phone number, they can find out a lot of things about you and your name. So, and sometimes in those files, there's even your social security number. And once somebody has that, they can do a lot of things to hurt you. So my, my biggest advice to you is prevention. And this is hard to do. I know when you call a business or you're dealing with somebody that um, has all your personal information, but you're angry at them, maybe the company, but then you get angry at that rep, and they start taking it not professionally, but they take it personally. And once they take it personally, you don't know their boyfriend could be a hacker. Their boyfriend could be someone that knows how to stalk. And next thing you know, and you won't realize where it's coming from, but all of a sudden your bank account's hacked. All of a sudden your emails don't work. All of a sudden someone breaks into your home. You know, it could all be tied to that one customer service rep that you upset because you were upset. So my goal here is to let you know you've got to bite your tongue. You've got to be polite. You've got to be nice to people that you know know everything pretty much about you. Now, a customer service rep doesn't know everything about you. So now let's talk about friends and family, co-workers, neighbors. You have to remember, these are people that you've gotten to know, you know, for years in some cases. And they know you've shared everything with some of these people. Everything. That's very sensitive information. And next thing you know, something happens and you fall out with those people. Again, you don't know what they are capable of doing. Nobody knows everybody 100%. And you don't know who they know. I mean, you don't know that their friend could be a stalker or they could know how to stalk themselves as far as hacking, I mean. And then that's part of stalking is hacking you and, and terrorizing you and playing games with you. It's called gaslighting. It's where they do so many bizarre events that it makes you even question your sanity. You start to get paranoid. 
your friends think something's going on with you that's you know they don't 100 percent believe what you're telling them because it's so outrageous because that's what these stalkers these professional stalkers know how to do is to terrorize you psychologically and they do things in such a way where you can't prove that they're doing it and it makes you d discredit you it makes you look like you're the one that's losing it that maybe you're the one that's hurting them and that's what's really interesting about these stalkers is that once you know who they are and you're telling everybody that you know who it is the next thing you know they're saying they're the victim because you're bashing their name you're you're saying these things that aren't true about them but yet you know they're true it's just that some of these people are so clever that they know, they have connections like cricket detective friends or just criminal friends or or they they stay in the dark web all the time dealing with criminals uh you don't know what they're doing and to back back up again talking about friends and family and neighbors you have to apply the same rule once you start seeing the red flags and you know something's going on this person knew my goodness i don't know about this person and i don't like them anymore i don't want to know this person anymore no, you've got to know them. What you've got to do is keep the, a positive relationship with them, but slowly back away, slowly don't be available, slowly have real plausible excuses. You know, eventually these people, you know, they're going to go on and they're going to find other people to to uh, associate with and, and unfortunately possibly hurt, and it's not going to be you because you've seen the red flags. Don't ignore the red flags. Let me tell you some red flags. If they share with you something that they want to do to somebody, like say they use the terminology, oh, I wish I had more information about them so I could ruin their life and career. Or they say something to you, oh, you know, I could drain her bank account anytime I want. Or they say to you, oh, I hate that person worse than I hate so-and-so. And then you know how much they hated so-and-so. Um, especially if they say they hate you more than they hate somebody that you know they've hurt, you're in big trouble, okay? So mainly it's prevention. But let's say it's too late. You know, you did all those things. And um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But what you've got to do is not react. That's all I can tell you. Once you start seeing the hacking happening, your emails, your Facebook, your Twitter... Um, even your credit card and bank accounts, they're all the, of a sudden all the passwords are changed. As long as they don't take your money and as long as they don't use your identity, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do legally. Nobody's going to help you. The police won't help you. The Federal Trade Commission won't help you. Um, the FBI won't help you. And your friends and family may think, you know, you're losing your mind because you're saying all these things. That yet you can't prove, even though you know who's doing it, you can't prove it. You know, and um, so I'm assuming at this point that you know who it is. In a lot of cases, you can figure it out. And they'll make sure you know. They'll do something weird like, like all of a sudden you'll get reminders on your iPhone that you don't say you know you didn't put there, but they're like events of your life. They're basically saying they know all these things about you. But if you would show that to someone else, they would just think you put them on there. So, you know, you got to... You just you got to have solid evidence, and unfortunately, you probably aren't going to get it. So the best thing you got to do is don't react. So that's this is my motto: take action without reaction. And if you don't know for sure what to do, if you're in doubt, wait it out. It's better to do absolutely nothing, even though all these things are happening to you. It's better that you do nothing at all, nothing. And that's what's going to drive those stalkers crazy. When they see they're not getting to you, that you're not running around like a chicken with its head cut off, changing all your bank accounts, changing your credit cards, um, you know, changing all your locks in your home, which, you, by the way, you do need to do that. You need to have a real professional lock. Once you know you've been broken into, the locks you got to get are the kind, they're kind of expensive, about $300 for installation and everything. But they have like two locks on them at once, so it's really hard to pick them. Actually, it's impossible to pick them. They'd have to knock your door down to get through your door. Now, there's nothing stopping them from breaking your glass window and coming in, but at least that would be evidence, see? And these people don't want evidence. They don't want any proof that anything you're saying is true. They want people to think you're crazy so that they won't believe you. And but at some point... If you are being stalked and you can't handle what's happening and you are reacting the way they want, unfortunately, it's just going to get worse because they know they got to you and they're going to keep getting to you. Now, there will be periods of time they'll leave you alone because they got other victims, you know. 
But they'll come back, oh wait, we haven't bothered so-and-so for a while. Let's go after them for fun. So I don't know what else to tell you. Just prevent it from happening. Bite your tongue to anybody you don't like that you're upset with or you're upset calling into some company. Be nice and slowly back away, especially if you know these people. And stay away. Stay away from them, but do it in a nice way. But if you've crossed the line and somehow you've upset them and they're out to get you, I'm really sorry to tell you, there's not pretty much anything you can do except just don't take any action and just wait it out and hope that, well, you don't really want to hope it, but at some point they do something where they do leave evidence. And then finally, you know, you can, the police will get involved, the Federal Trade Commission in case it's your, um, your identity being uh, stolen and they've used it in some way, then you know, you, they'll do something. There's also services out there that will help you um, monitor your credit accounts. You can put a fraud alert on your, um, all your um, credit, at the credit bureau for your credit report. You can hire these services that will monitor even your social security numbers so nothing will go through without your permission. They'll email you and make sure it's you. So there's some things you can do once, you know, you think someone is going to hurt you. But again, the most important thing is prevention. So good luck. I hope it never happens to you. All right. Have a good day. Bye.